Yes, no, both will do. Welcome again. Um, so this talk is about DON, which stands for Diagnosing OVS in Neutron. How many in this room actually think that they know neutron networking very well? OK, a few hands, good. So my hand will not, would not have been raised to this question. So I was, I am a fairly new, I'm fairly new to the OpenStack environment, so I was, and my expertise is on networking, so I was trying to play around with neutron networking, and every time there was an issue, what I would face is that I just didn't know how to debug the system. And there were some um, help on the OpenStack page, and if you do a Google search, you'll get tons of information on it. And as the keynote speaker said during um, during the first day's keynote, you shouldn't need a PhD to run it, but it sure does feel that you need a lot of information just to be able to figure out whether simple things are working or not. So we took this opportunity to work on certain automation steps so that the basic stuff can be very easily understood. And why did we cho choose OVS? There are multiple plugins, of course, but uh, we chose OVS because it's still by far the most commonly used plugin. Um, and there are way more information, there is way more information on the internet about OVS than any of the other plugins. So here, I promise to keep as many slides with pictures as possible, and the pictures might have words, but, um, so this is the network schematic of a typical um, OpenStack installation. There's the management network, which um, is needed for the OpenStack components to speak to themselves. And this, the addresses on this is not exposed to the outside world. Okay. Then there is the data network in green, uh, where the VMs actually communicate, the data communication between the VMs happen. Then there is the external network for, um, so that people from outside or from the internet can access this system. And then there is the API network, which allows tenants to um, actually use the service. This API network is also exposed to the outside world. But, uh, and in many cases, the external network and the API network might be the same. On this, OVS runs on these two places, wherever the Neutron plugin agent, um, you can see the Neutron plugin agent, those are the places where the OVS agent works. Um, and so, even though the title of the talk is debugging OVS, but we found out that for very basic things, we also need to um, look at certain other things which are, uh, which are part of the system. So this is, this is a picture straight out of the troubleshooting guide. So you can see that um, there are, I think, around nine devices or ports through which a packet has to flow before it can, it can flow out. So, for example, it starts with the VM, say VM01, it has its Ethernet interface. It goes into a TAP interface, the VNet0. From there, it's on the V Ethernet pair, which is the QVB XXX and the QVO XXX, and from there, the integration bridge, from then the physical bridge, and so on and so forth. Uh, not all of these might be there in every setup, but primarily till the uh, integration bridge which is the red box that you see there. Almost everything is there. For, my, for whatever results I'm going to, or the pictures that I'm going to show you, uh, I've done it on a single VM dev stack setup. So most of the time, the, the BR ETH, the Ethernet bridge is not going to be in operation. So this is just the compute node. And you don't have to pay too much attention to it. This is all available on the OpenStack page. And this is again on the network node. The network node actually has another picture that I'll show. So this is just the devices running on the networking node. And then there, are also the, there is also the concept of namespaces on the networking node. So namespaces are, for example, for um, isolated L2 to operate with the same IP addresses. Okay? So that the IP addresses of one L2 domain doesn't uh, overlap with another one. So th this is the picture which is, which is the namespace. So again, if you go through the document and depending on your familiarity with, the, with 
uh, Linux networking as well as with OVS networking. Some of these might be very obvious to you, and some, but most of it would not be obvious. And certainly, for a person who is not interested or is not knowledgeable in networking, this is this is some this is pure magic. I mean, you don't you don't know what's going on here. You don't even know if all of this is going to be working when some of this might not even be working, and your system might still be up. So troubleshooting this is non-trivial. Again, I will I will request people interested to go to the OpenStack page. There is a troubleshoot chapter. Chapter 12 is entirely on troubleshooting. And if you look at these steps, there are a ton of steps. And even if you know all of them, if you want to do them manually, it's going to take you quite a bit of time. And especially if your topology is large, then there's just no way you can do it manually. I mean, unless you exactly know that these are the nodes and these are the ports that I want to actually monitor. So Dawn, in, in a nutshell, what it does is it automates the basic troubleshooting steps. Most of it has been outlined in the troubleshooting guide. But till now, we haven't seen anything which automates it and makes it just easy and quick for users to use. Okay. So hopefully, the demo is going to make an offer that nobody can refuse. So I'm going to show a demo. And um, the demo. Uh, as a matter of fact, I have basically pre-run lots of the steps in the demo just so that we can go into more of the details of how the output looks and what do I exactly do in order to get that. So, so this is the this is the familiar Horizon dashboard where I have a very simple setup. This is not a complicated setup by. So we have two private networks, the orange and the green. And each has two VMs running on them. And then there is another VM, uh, VM4, which is connected to both the orange and the green. So it has interfaces in two private networks, as well as the public network. And there are two routers, which are both uh, connected to the public and the private. You, you don't need two routers, but I just wanted to see whether the system works fine with two routers in the system. Um, so, so when you run the, the so by the way, Dawn is written in Python and um, it's easily integratable to um, Horizon. Um, so when you run the uh, run the script, what you immediately get is I'm going to again zoom out later is a view like this. So where to the left is the compute node and to the right is the network node. So I'm going to, again, zoom back in so that it's easier for you to see. So here it gives a view of the entire system where you first have the VMs lined up, and then on each of the VMs, what are the networks and what is the IP address on each of the networks? And then it connects to which TAP device and which QVB device on the Linux bridge, and then again on the uh, connecting devices on the um, on the integration bridge. So you saw the first picture that I had given from the troubleshooting guide. It's basically that same picture replicated in a, uh, automatically to give you exact uh, configuration of the system, how the system has been configured now. The color coding is basically saying which they, they you can think of them as the same VLANs. So all of these, say all of the greens use the same VLAN, which is VLAN tag three. So for example, there are configuration errors in which you do have a network, if you do have a um, interface on a particular network, but the tag might be incorrect. So here, that would have popped up in a very, um, very intuitive manner. There would be red or something of that sort. By the way, this has not been jazzed up with any JavaScript around. So with that, you can actually say right click and get even more details. And all. This act this actually parses through a lot of information, a lot of, um, it goes into the system, runs a lot of commands, parses the results, takes those results in and runs follow-up commands and parses those results and finally comes up. All of this is finally um, uh, concised into this picture. So similarly, there is a networking, uh, there is the network side view where there is the external bridge which has two routers 
and uh, they have the QG uh, devices or interfaces, and they, then they are connected again with the QR interfaces on the integration bridge. So here again, the each network has, if you notice, there are, there are devices which doesn't, there are tap devices which doesn't have anything coming out. These are actually your, um, these are connected to the DHCP agents which are not uh, plotted here, but you could plot them. So the networking view is router specific, whereas the, the network node view is, the router spe is router specific, whereas the compute node view is VM specific. Now you can imagine if you have a very complicated topology, then this picture would be quite big and um, quite big, app. and more importantly, doing that manually would have been next to impossible. Right. So now, once we have that, we once we have the picture, the the bad thing about providing people with pictures is that the moment they have pictures, they want to know more about it. Right. I mean, initially, just getting the picture would be difficult, but once you give them picture, they want to know more, which is obvious. So then we do some basic analysis tests. So for example, in this, we do some OVS tests and some ping tests. And these are the very basic things that you will, the ping test is probably the very basic thing that we'll do. And OVS is once ping doesn't work, you'll probably want to do OVS tests. So, and we, we think we found an OVS reporting bug because we don't see any, uh, any functional impact of, that, of this bug, but we do, uh, see that there are certain issues. So, for example, in the in the picture here, there are two only three tags being used, right? Three colors, basically: purple, green, and and I think the this one, blue. So there are there are these three tags. So if you, so this just tries to do a particular test. What it tries to do is that. It flushes the MAC table and then it tries to learn a MAC on that particular tag on a particular port, okay? So it tries to, it sends a packet, a pseudo packet obviously, it sends a packet on a particular port and it verifies that it learned it on a particular port. Now it tries to send another packet to that learned MAC and tries to see whether it sends it out on the same, on the learned port or not. Very basic switch behavior, right? <clears throat> and even though the system is actually, and here it's, it's like a, um, it's a JSON format output of what all it has done, it has, the command and the output and all this kind of stuff. So this also gives you what exact commands that were run, so that once you know that something is in, uh, something is showing a, a, is showing some problems, you can go in and also do that manually probably. For f as of now, for most people, it would be even difficult to just figure out okay, what are the commands to run to check whether it's learning Max currently. Right. So. Um, at the end, it's going to, it, it does all of this, and so it actually does a fail, which is the packet forwarded to incorrect port 15. So as far as we can see, that as far as we can say, this seems to be a reporting error. There is no functionality impact we have seen. So we are, we are Pritesh, who is the other, who is the co-speaker, he couldn't be here because of visa issues. Um, he is an active OVS contributor. So he said that, yeah, it might be, and he's, he's trying to follow up with the OVS community to figure out if this is a reporting error or not. Um, so as a, as a result of that, all of these are, the, the OVS test fails miserably according to this, but it's, the system is actually running. There were, for the ping test, there were two routers, right? And so for each of the routers, it tries to do a ping test between all pairs of VMs and all pairs of interfaces. So you can imagine it's it's like it's an exponentially uh, it's an n cross n um, test. So most of the time, so we'll see that most of the time, all the all the ping tests are passing. But there are certain things which are failing, and if we take a closer look, we'll see that always a particular IP address fails. Okay, the ping to a particular IP address fails. Um, so now again, so this gives you a very basic idea of how the system looks. Are all pings passing, which is the most basic test you can do, and we see that some tests don't pass, okay? So now we, again, we have given this information, it's obvious for us to ask, okay, now let me find, if I do a ping, where is it not reaching? Why is it not reaching this guy? Why might be a more difficult answer, but at least let's find out where it goes to. So if we do a ping trace, so th there is actually a, 
a pink dress um, button that you can click. And what it gives you, for example, this is a pink dress between two interfaces connected to the same network. Okay. So these are all the things that are lit up. So it starts from 10, 0, 2, 3, 2, and it goes to the tab device, the QVR, QVB, QVO, and all the way back up. Right? So the, how is this uh, picture generated? So we or originally had the, had the picture that we generated from all the connections. Then we actually run TCP dump on each of these ports. Okay? And we verify that the particular packet which has been sent has been received on each of these particular ports. Okay? So in this case, it's a, it's a successful ping. So that's why, and it is a ping within the same network, same private network. Okay, so that's why there there is nothing on the on the neutral on the networking node that is that has lit up here, right? Now we do a ping test between two IPs, which are on different private networks, private one and private two. So the left hand side of the picture is very similar, but now now we saw that now we see that. Yeah, some other stuff on this has been lit up. Okay. So which is how it actually goes. You, you can notice that this is VLAN tag 2, which is the incoming VLAN tag, the VLAN tag 2. And then it actually sends it to VLAN tag 3, and from where it goes out to the other network. Okay. So this, the, both of these are examples of where the stuff works fine, where the ping works. So finally, we have an example of a scenario in which there is some issue. Remember that 10.03.6, we were not able to ping it. So we, we do the same ping tracing on this, and we see that these are, these are all the colored nodes are nodes where we expect them to be green, but the red nodes are where we don't see the packets anymore. Okay? So something happened. So it reaches all the way to this thing. So basically, it works fine in the VLAN tag too, Somehow, it's not being able to forward from VLAN tag 2 to VLAN tag 3. Okay? So this, again, we might now want to ask, like, why did it not forward? Right? But this talk is not going to go into that. I haven't reached that stage. I haven't reached at automating that stage. But at least we know where it has reached. And so we know which node to log into and debug there and see if the tables and all there look correct. Okay? And all of this processing and all of this takes it doesn't even take a minute, right? All of this can be done in less than, uh, in less than a minute. Okay? And there is not, no magic here. It's exactly what the troubleshooting guide says, us, asks us to do if there is an issue, but automated. Okay? So the purpose here is that, OK, once you, you, you run this, check this. If everything is green, OK, go ahead and do, go ahead with your, what you, whatever you want to do with your network. If things are not working, run this, see if there are reds and stuff like that, and then you know where to debug. In a, in a large setup, it's very difficult for you to find out what, where exactly should I even debug. Dawn just um, simply automates that stuff for you. So this is most of the demo that I had. And so this is my final slide before I can take questions. So. The takeaway is that this is extensible to any plugin. It's very simple stuff. It runs commands, parses commands, analyzes those results, runs further commands based on the results of par uh, parsed uh, the f uh, earlier commands. So this is extensible to any plugin. It's right now for OVS because of its obvious pop popularity. Um, but I hope others can also provide certain things like this. And we strongly believe this should be part of standard distribution. So we are in the process of actually contacting, say, Neutron PTLs and all, and ask them that w to go through a blueprint process and integrate it with this with Horizon. So Horizon, you should expect a Horizon tab which will just say, like, diagnose or verify or validate, something like that. And it gives you some pictures and say, OK, things are fine. Or please look at this node. This node doesn't seem to be behaving fine. OK? So that's about it. So if you have questions, feel free. Yeah. Uh, would you mind using the mic? I think it's good. OK. Oh, OK. Uh, you can't get it today. Uh, we are in the process of outsourcing it, um, uh, open sourcing it. Uh, sorry, not outsourcing. <laughs> uh, open sourcing it. Um, so uh, my, our goal is to get it 
through the um, OpenStack releases. But but if that takes time, before that we might have a um, we might have a version available just from our GitHub or something. Oh, okay. Um, maybe I can go. You can just search for network troubleshooting on OpenStack. It's chapter 12. I know it by heart by now. So, um, and um, just to, I think, yeah. This, this, is, this is the stuff. There is a lot of very good information. It gives, basically it told me what to automate. So yeah. hey, um, really nice talk and really cool tool. Thank you for this. I think uh, all the hours uh, spent debugging this stuff, it's great that we can just get a picture. So thank you. Thank uh, the question I have is, there are some cases at least that I've run into where packets disappear in OVS. You can't run TCP dump on those on, you know, when you're inside the switch itself. So is the only way of dealing with that just looking at the flow tables and understanding what's going on there? Yes. Do you have any thoughts for uh, like trying to improve that without so, you know someone gaining expertise in open flow and so, so on? So for example, this this particular the OVS test that it did, it did go through all those like whether it's learning properly and all those things, right? So if if a particular o, if a particular OVS test succeeds, and even then, if you're looking if you're finding the packets are being dropped, I right now don't have knowledge how to debug that, right? So these kind of tests, they, they look into the OVS footprint or the OVS tables information, whatever, and it actually verifies that it works according to the table. Okay? Um, and beyond that, this doesn't do anything, but of course, um, if, you cannot, if a human cannot look at it through some commands and parsing the output and figuring out, oh, this is the reason that this should have matched this, right? That kind of logic is automatable. But if something else goes wrong, then we'd, I don't even know how I would debug it as a person. Thank you. So if, if something happens like that, then you, you are in for a real tough time. Hi. Uh, two quick questions. One, do I need Cisco equipment to run this? No. All right. Thank you. And the other one, would this work with uh, alerting, for example, SNMP traps or even emails? or? So, so this is written as a... It, this is written in Django, Python Django, right? So, and there is no Cisco proprietary stuff at all. It's, it's running on my Ubuntu VM on my laptop. There's nothing Cisco on it at all. Um, so when you say alerting, do you want it to receive alerts and say something about it or? Send alerts, actually. Oh, send alerts based on when it finds issues. Oh, of course, you can extend it to that. I haven't looked into it. Yeah, of course, it can mm -hmm. do it, but yeah. Uh, I am expecting that if we go via the blueprint process for OpenStack, then we get a more functionality which actually helps the ops guys. This is, this is more like, okay, this is a cool thing to do and things like that, but it really doesn't help the ops. He's not going to come and press validate every now and then, right? He wants an alert or an email sent to him and saying that, okay, something has gone wrong. And, and a quality alert, as in not a thousand false yes, alarms. Yeah. Yes, yes. All right, thank and you very typically much. Typically when things go wrong, you'll you tend to get a lot of alerts, but it's a real challenge to actually consolidate into, say, one root cause or anything. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, extending on your answer you gave on uh, troubleshooting drop pack, you might want to look into drop watch. It's a, a, a it's, tool. It's a tool there. That yes. will tell you where exactly a packet has been dropped inside a kernel, and. Given the issue that you uh, have outlined with the port numbers not matching, yes. what I could what I could imagine is that you're messing up with open flow ports and data path flows. Like exactly. tracing requires the data path flows, and maybe you're comparing to the open flow port numbers. It might be. So uh, it might so be an explanation why yeah. why it's showing as a failure. Okay. Yeah. I mean that's what. So the Pritesh, he's my kind of OVS. Um, uh, what should I say, OVS Oracle. So I asked him, he said, I, he'll look into it and let me know if this is an actual error or am I doing something. Obviously, this is a tool written, right? It might have its own bugs, so we have to refine it as we go along. Any more questions? Well, thank you. Thank you for coming to the talk and surviving till Thursday. <laughs> <laughs>